This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are going to play mono black auras. Yesterday's time with black white auras didn't exactly go swimmingly, but I have had a little bit of success with this mono black deck. It also feels weird to make so many different enchantment decks, but Theros is an enchantment based set. So even though enchantments are traditionally the nut low in magic, for those of you who haven't played magic long, they're often the weakest card type, especially auras. With Theros and with this interesting push of auras, we end up playing a lot more enchantments. So this deck has a mono black flavor and I cut it kind of aggressively. I think that Ephemia and Temerit Calls the Dead are best when they're very aggressive cards, getting in a ton of damage. So to surround them with a bit more of an aggression shell made a lot of sense to me. And here we have the Hateful Eidolon once again, but we also have Sidekick Knight of the Ebon Legion, who is really great for a beatdown creature. Then for the enchantments, we have Dead Weight, which does require a creature deck to be good, but you know, there's so much mono red. And then uh, we have Mogi's Favor to keep the pressure on, but also kill one toughness creatures from the opponent's side or team up with dead weight to kill a creature that is larger, uh, three toughness or higher. And I like this, I still like this card a lot better than Meyer's Grasp, which is two mana for minus three, minus three, which I don't think is a very good rate and doesn't hit many things that otherwise couldn't be hit here. But anyway, this is pretty much the Eidolon package with Deadweight and Mogi's Favor. Then we have Ephemia the Cacophony to provide a flying attacker and crank out the two twos. We've got the Drill Bit to hit the opponent's hand and take away their Ember Cleave, their Fires of Invention, their Shatter the Sky, whatever. Four Murderous Rider to remove key threats. Four Temerit Calls the Dead to create more and more zombie tokens. Two Rankles for a nice hasty quick attacker and four spawn of mayhems so rankle and spawn are the oomph of the deck and they're going to try to put the pressure on the opponent and kill them quickly it was something i felt was la lacking in the black white version and it's kind of strange that it seems easier in mono black when i could have played these in black white so maybe we have to re-explore that black white just a little bit and see what happens there then the mana base is straightforward 18 swamps Four Castle Lock Lane, and it is 22 total land, so we get to run a pretty low land count in this version because we really only need to get to three most of the time to play spawn, and then we just keep the pressure on. So we're going to go play this in a standard event today, as I like to do. Standard events are... Well, they're nice and self-contained events with prizes and stakes on the line. They don't count towards rank, but they are great for a YouTube video because you get to see kind of a beginning, middle, and end, whereas rank is a nebulous, ongoing thing. So that's what we're going to play today, and I think you'll enjoy it, and I'll see you in the game. Okay, this is Eidolon Ephemia spawn rankle it's like a super aggressive curve with no enchantment so we might not get extra bonuses out of these but you've got to love something this aggressive from your you know aggressive black deck makes sense right and why would it be anything else of course it's red it's always red but if they kill my eidolon the ephemia gets a lot better here come yep yep bringing in the shock no surprise but now we get four power and two bodies on turn two, which is probably gonna give us a spawn of mayhem next turn. Go ahead, runaway steamkin, do it. Take your weapon, strike me down with all of your hatred. Wow, that can't block, cool. So the biggest fear now is getting Ember cleaved out and our opponent's a little ways away from that, but not as far as it seems just a couple of creatures so we want to close this as quickly as possible and the opponent with the gg well we will see um yeah that's fine murderous rider well that turns off any threat of ember cleave if we use it well so let's get aggressive and stay aggressive down to seven Double good game. Yeah, yeah, nice. When you say good game but don't concede. 
All right, we talked him out of playing onward. Don't say good game if you're not gonna scoop, guys. That just makes it seem like you're disingenuous and that you're up to something and now we have to like ultra close you. This hand is weird. It doesn't have early pressure. Um, the dead weights could be good. I don't really know. The thing is, I always assume I'm against mono red until I'm not. And this hand is fine against them, but it's also not great. We miss a land drop, we lose probably. And a mulligan. Okay then. <laughs> okay. Okay, deck. Let's do it. We're gonna get you with one twos. Like if we draw a dead weight off this hand, we draw so many cards. If it matters. Temple of Mystery. Oh boy. I wonder if we're against Simic Flash. I said on stream the other day that Simic Flash is the good guy now because blue, white, and red are both pretty broken. And blue, white can, like Simic Flash, if it's on the play, can kind of fight them. But I don't know, that feels weird. Is it ever the good guy? Paradise Druid and a Blast Zone. Don't feel like I quite know what we're up against just yet. So this exiles enchantments only. So if we had an Ephemia, we could only exile enchantments. This is an enchantment or creature. So we're going to exile, I guess they're both enchantments, so it's fine, but try to exile creatures that are not enchantments with Temerit Calls the Dead. Try to exile enchantments that are not creatures with Ephemia, and try to exile lands and other crap with Mogi's what the heck ever, Mogi's favor. This is going to be pretty weak beatdowns. We're going to be out of cards really quickly. We're probably going to end up drawing cards with the castle. Our opponent's in the tank. They are not sure what to do with this little black enchantment list. And the answer is Drago. Deeps. Deep thoughts. This won't be an untapped land yet, so we don't have to quite... We don't have to be afraid. Let's see what our opponent does when we attack with all these creatures. We don't have to be afraid of Night Pack Ambusher is what I was trying to say. Uh, the opponent feeling the pressure a bit and choosing to block a Hateful Eidolon. Or not. So when Blast Zone goes off, the opponent gets to kill all these things. That might be what they're thinking about. And they're going to make the mana now. That's good, it lets us play spawn. Oh wait, they ticked up to two. Now they can't kill the Eidolons. We were going to play spawn anyway, just to be clear. But now it resolves. The opponent doesn't crack the passage. Now they do. Doesn't matter much because they're untapped anyway. It might imply the opponent wanted to draw land if you wanted to try to read information from that. So what do they have for four mana? What can Simic do to slow this down? Simic is one of those decks that's falling out of favor because when it gets behind, it's generally staying behind. And Baby Krasis... Eh, not the greatest. Murderous Rider's a nice one. We'll probably keep the pressure on. Here we're going to attack with everything. Do I want to call the dead with a Murderous Rider on top of my deck? It seems like if I draw this Murderous Rider, I can't lose, and if I play this, I might. So maybe I'm just supposed to draw a card here. But if the opponent does something to the spawn, actually, that's probably how I lose. They trade with the zombie. They have a Blast Zone on two. What does it all mean? They play Nissa, they die, right? They would have to play Nissa and something else. I think we should persist in being wide and let the Murderous Rider go as much as I liked it. At least having the Murderous Rider on top there ensured that our Timurite Calls the Dead hit a creature, something to exile. So I would have kept it no matter what. It's just one of those things where would we rather have that, or would we rather develop our board and have another zombie? 
it's kind of weird how one two life linker for one has been something in this game you don't always draw auras for this because you only run eight of them but usually milling gets you to them because mogi's favor can have escape and it also helps to throw it on spawn of mayhem and hit for extra but you know this this game they were just one two for one straight smork straight beat down how do they wiggle out of this A third fabled passage. A passage so fabled that they wrote fables about the fabled passage. Unbelievable. It's Nyssa. Yeah, make sure you attack. They're hoping I block. It's, it's their out. It's if I block there. And there's the favor, just in time. Just in time. This hand is all about one, two for one. Although we might also get to rankle and I think we keep it. I think we keep it. We have to draw dead weight. If we draw dead weight, this hand is awesome. So in the spirit of drawing dead weight, I'm going to lead with the Eidolon. Because if I do draw dead weight, I play or or favor. Favor would be great here too, because this has one toughness. Ah! If I do draw it, I can go idle on and then draw two cards. But nope, no edge wall innkeeper experience here today. All right, let's turn this sideways. Does the opponent have raised the alarm or something? No, nope, not yet. Another. Another. Get ready for Heliod or Linden or whatever, whatever's coming. All that glitters. And with a mana open. Okay, this opponent has tricks. <laughs> this opponent has the Karamutra's blessing or whatever. It's gonna be hard to raise a big old life linker. Let's start with the spawn. So if our opponent doesn't have a backup creature, Rankle can make them sacrifice it. But if the opponent doesn't play a creature this turn, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Ooh, they, I don't, they might not. They might not. <gasps> they didn't. <clears throat> no creature. I can't believe we have all this and we're losing the race. It's embarrassing. But let's go. Let's go, Rankle. Everybody get it, get in there. All right, let's sacrifice stuff. Each player sacrifices a creature. Each player discards a card. And we don't need to do the draw thing. We're trying to reduce resources and end the game. We are we are the beat down. Okay, they want to draw a card with the blessing. I bet they have another. Oh yeah, all day. So, discard this land. Sacrifice one of these Eidolons, since we don't really have anything to go with it. And whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you controlled that was attached to it. Each aura I controlled? Oh, okay. So that triggered because this was an enchanted creature, but I didn't draw any cards because I didn't have anything attached to it. Kind of redundant, kind of silly. And wow, we would have been we would have been wrecked without Rankle. Wrecked. Our opponent has a sense of humor. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Good stuff. Good God, this 4-0 was so quick and so easy. I'm kind of disgusted. Let's keep it going. Deadweight, drill bit. These cards are in my deck. I had almost forgotten. Femia, fine. We need to draw land. 
You have 20 in the deck. It's like one out of, a little better than one out of three. I will get there. This is going to happen. This is going to work. Temple of Mystery. Scry to the top. Land, they didn't even make me sweat for it. All right. Let's get our flyer down to hopefully set off spawn of mayhem next turn. I don't know. I actually have some choices. Am I supposed to spawn here? Or am I supposed to drill a bit? My opponent left mana open. I got something, and it's probably a growth spiral. I think I push for the... This is an exile enchantment. Okay, if they counter this, I get to make a 2-2. Two -two. If they don't counter it, I probably get, have two 2-2s two anyway. Let's. Well, there's a chance I get a pair of 2-2s two out of it. Yeah, spiral. Okay, still on blue and green with no teamer quite yet. All right. Missed on the enchantment part. Would have preferred a spawn there, but played around Quench. Maybe I get punished for that choice. I don't know. It seems Simic flashy. Always favor into the graveyard. Let's go ahead and make another 2-2 two -two Zombo. If the opponent plays a wolf, I get to deadweight it, so that would be fine. Let's send in the squad. We're reaching for mana. Here comes an ambusher. Yeah, they don't believe. They don't believe, but they will. When they feel the dead weight. <laughs> and now it's getting crazy up in here. I bet this deck is pretty good against Simic Flash. We didn't even draw Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is... A pretty solid card or murderous rider which is another solid card against them i do expect simic flash to make a comeback if you hate the deck i'm sorry it's it's a deck that can compete with red if it's got a good draw and it can compete with blue white very well and fires like if jeskai fires is around that was the main reason simic flash got popular in the first place Jeskai frickin' fires. Alright, let's send a message. Get in there. Graveyard right now still has some enchantments for Ephemia to eat. Keep the zombie train going. The opponent could have a negate, but... Let's see, I did save Spawn of Mayhem on top. So I would love to drill a bit to protect Spawn of Mayhem, if that's even necessary. They might have Brazen Borrower. I definitely want to resolve this, and they can't really quench it. So let's go for this. S send out some negate bait here. Where does this go? I feel like on the zombie is best. Because they want to bounce the spawn of Mayhem, which would neutralize this. Knight of the Ebon Legion is good on its own. Ephemia... We don't want to kill it. Yeah, I feel like this would run into a negate or a quench here, so we're just going to hold it. And if we don't kill our opponent next turn, it's going to help us punch through another spawn of mayhem, which should be good enough. Wow, they actually did hold on to that Brazen Borrower till end step. I'm sure some of you were thinking they don't have Brazen Borrower. Well, now they let the shields down, so we're going to drill bit you. Nightpack Ambusher, 2 Aether Gust. Really good card against Mono Black. Love those sideboard cards. Let's grab your Ambusher. <laughs> That's why I don't play these kind of cards in Best of One. There are mad lads like me that, despite red and green decks obviously being great in the meta, will run blue white or mono black. And, you know, you'll, you'll feel silly. 
Nobody likes to feel silly, do they? Why, why play cards with no targets in your deck? It's so weird. Good God, five and zero, oh. going for six and zero, oh. going for undefeated. I've only played one mono red deck too. The main reason I wanted to play this is I felt like the mono red matchup was good. I haven't played against blue white. That matchup's hard, really hard. You need everything to go well. But if they do miss on Shatter the Sky or Teferi on a crucial turn, you can run them over. Well, you will try this. We don't have any help for Ephemia, so we're really reliant here on Ephemia into spawn, into drill bit or rankle. Our opponent flex in those world championship sleeves. I don't know. I feel like they should have had a palm tree or something Hawaii related on them. They look pretty bland to me, to be honest. Like, are they that much better than this sleeve? I don't think so. But what do you think? Sound off in comments. Somebody's gonna drop food on me? That's probably a bad matchup. I mean, I'll try. But this card against Mayhem Devil doesn't inspire me. Yeah. This is, this is bad. This is very bad. All right, well, let's hope that they really skimped on Murderous Riders and that the spawn of Mayhem and Rankle combo just run them over. I am trying to attack now. Spawn up. I love Drillbit in the deck, but it sometimes it just doesn't fit your curves well. It's not like in the Rakdos Knights deck where you can almost always cast it on turn two. Because you had enough one drops in that deck that you could go turn one, Fervent Champion, turn two, Knight of the Ebon Legion, Fervent Champion, or Knight of the Ebon Legion, Drillbit, or other Fervent Champion, Drillbit. Like, it seemed like you'd always drill bit when you needed to. Come on, no Mayhem Devil, one time. Witch's Oven, okay. They don't have the engine fully functional yet, and they're going to try to get there. I must kill them before they do. All right, two drill bits. We could go in for a rankle here. Let's attack first, see what happens. Let's not go in for a rankle here. Let's, let's drill bit this. The opponent's hand can't be amazing, though. They're going to be trying to dig for the good stuff. That might have been a case to rankle instead. Anyway, let's tear him up. There must be a Massacre Girl or something in this hand that they kept it. Wow! Okay. Alrighty, then. Should have rankled. Should have rankled. Next turn, though, I can rankle and bit. So, we'll see what happens. No Mayhem Devil, come on. No Mayhem Devil. What are we doing? Why'd they float a mana? That must be a mistake. Yep, easy mode. <laughs> Magic is easy. Trail of Crumbs what you need. Should have rankled. I can just see this whole thing falling apart now. Everybody get comfy. The 7-0 dream is going to die like this. Not like this. Not like this. They're still under a ton of pressure, but the engine is just about in full effect. This is a sacrifice. This is a sacrifice. I guess they still have to figure out how to kill the spawn, but if they find another devil, that will be trivial. I guess they don't have a way to sacrifice the food. 
They have to block here. Or they die. So that means they'll eat the food token and dig with trail, and maybe we can take what they find with drill bit. They'd have been so dead if I'd just played Rankle that turn. Who knew they had all land in hand? Um, that tramples. That tramples. You don't want to do that. No, no. No, that's not it. That ain't it. Oh, they're going for it too. I think they're gonna do it. So that's one. They sacrifice the goose to the oven. That's two. No, that's not gonna. That's not gonna kill it. What are you doing? Okay, they didn't put the goose in the oven. We're, we could do sacrifice a creature, but I don't think that's good. Discard a card, they just discard a land. It's not impressive, but I guess neither are the lands in my hand. Let's do lose a life, draw a card. And just keep the pressure on them. And then uh, also discard a card. Yeah. Like that. So close. But now they have cat oven crumb. Now they have cat oven crumb. It's a problem. All right, we hit a knight. Do we play the knight? Knight's just gonna die, right? Well, it'll be a 2-3, but the knight gets blocked by the cat. If I take this cat from my opponent, how do they get it back? They need to make a food. They might have to sacrifice their devil. All right. We can hope they don't have another creature. I mean, their draw's been weird. Who knows? They've got two unknowns over there. Let's see what's up. <sighs> oh, God. Um, I think I have to take the Murderous Rider. So, they would lose two life for it. Wait a minute. If they play the cat, they can't play this Murderous Rider. Their life total is too low. They would have to eat food. So if they play the cat, they go to three. Then they need another black source. So if they sacrifice the cat, put it in the oven and bring it back, they go to four. Then they can shock play it. No, they can't. They can't play this murderous rider. So what do I take? The cat's the cheapest thing to cast. I need them to commit their mana. So I think I take the cat, actually, and make them use all their mana. Feels weird, but yeah. Wow, they play another trail? What's that gonna accomplish? I mean, they can pick off the rankle, but the spawn's gonna get you. And they can't... Is that what's up? They're gonna shock, play murderous rider. No, they can't. It costs two life. Have they forgotten how the... Have they forgotten the two life? Like I almost did? I think they have. I think their plan is to shock, play blood crypt, and play murderous rider, and that's not gonna be good enough. That leaves you dead. That was the line I foresaw when I took the cat. That's why I took the cat. Oh, I think they're putting it together now. Math isn't just for blockers. It's also for people trying not to die. Oh, wait. That's what blockers are. Um, it's also for people trying to dodge cat lethal or spawn lethal or whatever. Just stop it. You know what I mean. Stop typing in comments. Stop it. Never mind. It's good for the algorithm. Keep typing in comments. Rage at me. Tell me how bad I am at magic. Tell me how I misspell words in my titles. Tell me how much you hate or don't hate the intro music. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. <sighs> Six and freaking O. Oh. 
on this silly mono black aura list. It reminds me of the mono black night list I had last season that went 7 0, that looked like a trash pile. And here we are. Let's go. And they're on a Johnny, so they're lifelink cats for sure, right? If we end up against control and we keep this hand, we lose. Just pretty, pretty straight up. But you know what? You know what? You got to take those chances. Because I think if we're against something like Mono Red, we're in a good position. We don't just win. Like, that's the problem with these hands. You don't just win if you're against Mono Red. We do probably beat White. And our opponent's giving off a pretty white vibe. All right. Temple. Here we go. If it's Simic Flash, we've got one of the best cards we could have for that. Suit up. You're going to war. Land number two. Say go. Say go. You know you want to say go. No land. Ugh. Missing that land drop was nasty. Uh-huh. Return to nature? Well, didn't see that one coming. You got me. Missing that land drop might be the game. We haven't missed one, like a crucial land drop yet in the video. So there it is. Kiora. I defy gods. Our opponent bringing some spice to the game. <sighs> wow. Face. Eidolon can draw some cards now if the opponent gives us something to enchant. Draw a card for each aura you controlled that was attached to it. Eh, this is bad. This ain't good. Oh no! Is it the Underworld Breach deck I played the other day? I'm not the only person who put a video out, to be clear. Several people did. I'm not saying it's my version. I'm just wondering if it is. Oh, they gave me a creature. Oh, you messed up. You done messed up now. Boom. Cards. Oh yeah, we back now. We still have to get around this Uro, but let's drop a drill bit on him. Krasis. Nah. All right, this is a very different take on the whole Lotus Field, Uro, Kiora. It's kind of funky. I see, we see the Kraken, we see the Krasis. Some pretty strong stuff. But here comes a very large Titan that's gonna draw two freaking cards. It's gross. It's absolutely sickening. Man, that land drop killed me. Just took the steam out of everything. <sighs> I hate that. All right, they bounce a one drop. That's whatever. Gross spirals, because why not? Yeah, they missed a land here too, but that just means their hand is gas. Don't know if the opponent would want to block away their Uro. They only have one card in their graveyard. Let's, but let's find out. It's pretty good for them to trade, I think. I think they win the long game, but there you go. So yeah, uh, one damage. We could play these and start pumping these up. I don't think that's particularly useful. Uro attacks, they gain three. They put out another land, but they don't have the land. Um, do we just have to start making zombies? I think so.
Like, how do we win? We have to come up with, like, rankles, spawns, and start forcing damage through the air. We have to get this off the battlefield, which... I guess my deck, that means Murderous Rider. Or a lot of mana in trading with a knight, which is definitely not ideal. Alright, they draw the land. I think I'm just taking a, taking a beating from the Titan here. God, this card. What a sweet card, though. I know people were angry about Simic getting good cards. This is different. It always takes the Simic deck in a different direction, and it's we're kind of starting to uncover how powerful it is with cards that go directly to the graveyard as opposed to the typical Nyssa Krasis stuff. And that maybe Uro's the build around, not Nyssa. It's, it, it, I think it's a sweet card. I know that opinions might be divided on that. Huh. Okay. So is this the part where I just have to attack my opponent and start throwing everything at them? They're at 18. They have a Kiora on four. If they block one of these knights, I pump it. Is that where I want to be, pumping this knight? It's a pretty tough call. I, I feel like the opponent has another Brazen Borrower because that's most of what I know about their deck. Maybe we need to go a little wider. Darn it, Rankle. What are you doing in the graveyard? Get back out here. All right, Zombie Mania running wild. And yeah, there's the borrower. So if I had attacked whatever, and if, if I were relying on getting damage through with the knight, pumping a knight would have been a disaster there. Do they have another? Third one? Nasty. On the bright side, Mogi's favor can pick off those borrowers and let me draw cards if the opponent ever plays them. Next turn, I feel like we do have to start attacking though. Our opponent, ah, uh, wow. The straight ball and return to nature. Multiples. But yeah, we have to start attacking because if we don't, our opponent will eventually draw a crisis. And that will be that will be the sadness. The saddest of times. Yep. My clock is also ticking, by the way. Taking six a turn is unsustainable. Tap Lotus Field. What do you got for it? All right, we draw the land. Phoenix Life Scry X. Yeah, solid, solid card. Let's go for the favor on the borrower. Now this is an escape card, so we can exile land to pay the cost. Draw a card with Eidolon. Land. Send in team. I feel like the opponent has another Kiora, so attacking Kiora doesn't feel like it would be very good. They untap the Lotus Field for a reason. If it's to scry with Castle Vantress, I'm pretty happy, but I'm pretty sure something else is going to happen. I have enough cards to bring Uro back if we kill it. The fourth Brazen Borrower. Good God, man. So if they play this, they attack me for nine. What do you think? Do they have a Questing Beast in this deck? If I take the nine, well, I'm, I'm going to gain one, but if I take the nine, I can't play the Rider, so I may as well ride or die here. 
The sad part is they get more cards out of a dead row than they do otherwise. Mm-hmm. Nick could play some kind of counter magic. Let's just make sure this resolves here. Like, how do we get back in this game? I just don't think we do. I think our start was too bad. We had to have them under much more pressure. Once they can start freely attacking me with their Titan, I think I've already lost. I'm still trying to make, like, four Brazen Borrowers is a lot too, by the way. But what's going on with their hand? I'm guessing they have at least one more Kiora. But there's something else going on. Maybe they have more Return to Nature? They could have killed the Eidolon. Oh, that's... That's a thing you can do. I mean, <laughs> so they were setting up to kill me with Return of the Wild Speaker, but they'll just draw, you know, six cards. That's that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and they've got these Krakens. <laughs> I don't know what to make of this deck. It's sweet though. All right, how do we get back in it? We don't. Like like I said, this 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 game was lost long ago. But I'm kind of curious about their deck. This game was lost when we didn't hit land drop number two. Or number three, sorry. Should have exiled the drill bit. I meant to. I aimed badly. Alright. Let's call up some more dead. One reason I'm really tempted to scoop, and this is something that's kind of controversial, but YouTube only, like, YouTube and viewers and everything I've learned from analytics is that I need to keep almost every video under an hour, between 30 minutes to an hour. So I could scoop a game like this just to make sure that it makes it in the video, because I do think this deck is sweet and we were playing for 7-0, which in theory we get matched against similar records, which means this deck was also playing for 7-0, so they're going to get a 7-0, and I think that's cool. Um, but if this deck, if this game takes half an hour, then it means I can't, pro I probably can't fit it in the video and show a, a good amount of the rest of the run. So it's one of those things where I want to scoop. I'm sure I can't win and I want this to get in the video, but then I have people leaving comments that I scooped early and I have to explain all this and I hate explaining it. All right. Uro still doing Uro things. There's five cards in the graveyard. I guess I'm just chumping here. I mean, they have 26 cards in library. Unlike the typical Simic decks these days, I don't think I can deck them out if they just play poorly. What they should do is on end step, flash in the borrowers and beat me to death, but we'll see. We'll see if they think of it. All right, other Uro. Draw a million. <laughs> Kiora, Kraken, Uro. Shenanigans. Unbelievable. The straight up return to nature feels weird. But I guess you're already using all these brazen borrowers. Maybe you just have to have to run that card. Like the Hydroid Crisis. Don't know if this deck wants or needs Nissa at all. What? Oh, ho, ho, are we doing it now? Oh, are we doing it now? Good God. Don't stop. Don't keep it coming. By all means, keep it coming. Yeah, whatever. Here's my spawn. Now I can block a flyer. Because I'm not going to die really soon or anything. 
No biggie. Draw a card. Yeah, see, I can draw cards too. I've got so many cards over here. Raise and borrows. It even draws a card because of Kiora. And the banner is the mana to make another Kraken. This is glorious. It's so excellent. Behold the tentacle. <laughs> oh, God. No, make sure you bring back Uru. Come on now. Ten, ten, Kraken. So much tentacle action. All the tentacle action you could ever want in your life. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I can't identify exactly what people who want tentacle action are looking for in their life, but it feels like this has to be a lot of it. <laughs> I mean, how about you attack? Have you considered attacking? Like, I just can't take it anymore. I don't want to... I, I, I feel like I've, I've seen peak tentacle. Come on. Come on, man. Let's throw the emotes. Ooh. Ugh. If I'm gonna not 7-0, I like not 7 0 that way. It's like 10 times better than getting mono-redded. Alright, everybody. I was 6-0. Now I'm 6-2. Some ugly RNG lately. This hand has a lot of sauce. Let's go for it. And it looks like if we're gonna be a winner, we gotta go through the red mage. I'm going to lead with the knight. I think the opponent's likely to kill either one, and I'd rather keep this so that if I draw Mogi's favor, I have a source of card advantage. Fun. And they exile a Mogi's favor. Wow. Wait to ruin my good time. Hate this deck so much. But let's cast Ephemia and see where this goes. Well, you got the rogue set up, and you've got a Mogi's Favor, which you can enchant this with and kill it, but you can't do it at instant speed. All right, here comes Annex. Yep. Behold, one ones. All right, we're going to Murderous Rider that Annex right before combat. Or in response to the opponent playing any red creature putting any red creature on the stack so that it doesn't gain two counters or two tokens, I should say. All right. Curious if they attack with the Annex. They might go for an Ember Cleave, but they would make me activate my Knight first. So let's not mess with that. Let's not even allow the Ember Cleave to come down. Yep, yeah. that can happen. That's just tra that's just part of doing business around here. Getting shocked. Are they going to play the Ephemia? They can actually exile this and make a two-two. How disgusting! They're really going to abuse me with my own deck. I just hate this. I hate everything about Red getting to go first. Everything about it is completely unfair. The snowball from Robber of the Rich is absolutely disgusting and shouldn't even be part of the game. It should absolutely be banned. 
the worst feels. All right. So where's your ember cleave? <sighs> well, make sure you think half an hour about that play. Jesus. I mean, they're going to ember cleave me anyway, so doesn't really matter what I do. No dead weights. Didn't draw any dead weights here. Maybe they just have another shock. Is that what they're doing? Bone Crusher Giant? Okay, could have been worse. It's pretty bad, to be clear. It's a very it's very, very bad. But it could have been worse. We needed a land there. Well, we needed a land to go with the Ephemia before. So I can Murderous Rider this. They have a bunch of satyrs. I guess this holds off the satyrs. They have to play Bone Crusher. Yeah, we're not quite done here. Next turn I play an Ephemia. Yeah, we're holding, we're holding, we're hanging in there. We're trying. I'm sure the top of their deck will disappoint me. Ah, uh, Steamkin could be worse. So this takes this to three, so we can let that resolve. And then here's where we do this, before they can get two tokens out of the deal. If they had a castle, I'd be dead. That's, that's how good castle is now. Oh, wow. All right, tosses one away. Appreciate that. Now they get another 2-2 two -two because Ephemia and Robber is so freaking stupid. But that's okay. That's my life. Here we got this. We can make our own zombie or we can have our own lifelinker. I think having the lifelinker is much more important at this stage. Can I draw an aura though? I put them in my deck. I'd really like to draw them. Instead, my opponent drew all my... They, they drew my only aura. Like, the dead weights are for this matchup. Why aren't they here? All right. Getting frisky. That's it. Let's kill it. Trade it for the murderous rider. I'm fine with that. Spawn. We're going with Temerit Calls the Dead. Find me a Mogi's favor. Come on. We needs it. Can we attack yet? I don't think so. We're not getting another... We're not getting anything off of this. Yeah, we can't attack. Off the top. Ember Cleave, of course, right? See the opponent, like, highlighting the card. Like, oh my god, I drew it! I drew it, you guys! I drew Embercleaf! I did it! I'm the greatest magic player. I'm so special. Uh, okay. Why are we on full control here? Why are we sitting here? Maybe they didn't. Or maybe it's just being weird. So you have to block as if they didn't draw it, because if they did, you're dead anyway. Infuriate. Oh. Could have been worse. Not quite dead? Wow. They turned everything sideways on an Infuriate? They made that look as ember cleavy as possible, didn't they? You guys all thought it. I, I thought I was dead. Um, can't really play a spawn of mayhem here, can I? But I can hold up using the Knight of the Ebon Legion, I suppose. Should attack with this to gain a life. I don't know, do I play spawn? What am I really doing if I don't play spawn? Next turn I'm gonna gain some life from these zombies. Yeah. This can offset the spawn a bit so that we can play it.
Okay, they said go. Gain some life. Do I really want any of these? I said I wanted the favor. I guess I do. I can draw it this turn if I want to. All right, start with drill bit. That's what I thought. So I can deadweight this to draw into the favor. I could also deadweight the steamkin, but that doesn't draw a card. Let's go like this. Kill that. Enchant this. We need the life. Now we need to send these. Clock them quickly. All right, they're gonna block there. I gain three life, I draw a card. They have no board. I think that's good enough. Okay, I can flash this back this turn. They're at 13. This would be seven, eight, nine next turn. So then I just need four more, yeah. That's the play. I don't even have to worry about claim the firstborn because it's converted mana cost is four. It would take like an act of treason. Or a lava coil. I guess that's a little more common. Did I actually pull this off? Oh my god! I beat turn two robber of the rich, stealing my ephemia, making like a million zombies. I thought that game was over. You could tell the salt in my voice. I thought I thought the seven wind dream was dead. I didn't want to see it. Let's get these prizes. Let's get these prizes. Boom, gems, trailblazer, gold, baller. All right, fireside chat about the deck. Uh, the drill bit is definitely not as good in this deck as it was in say Rakdos Knights and other places like that because it just doesn't activate spectacle the same way. I was still able to play spawn pretty consistently on time. Why did I lose that? Why did I lose my deck? Like, seriously, what's what's going on? Standard. Sort by last played. There it is. I don't know what the. Why can't I find these things? All right. So, dead weights were fine. Eidolon, Ebon Legion, Favor. Like this. This core is pretty good stuff. These drill bits are probably the worst thing going. You could run duress. Maybe it's supposed to be agonizing remorse since I. Only really have one two drop in Ephemia. So that is what I would do next, is I would test Agonizing Remorse for Drill Bit. So that's my recommendation. And otherwise, uh, yeah, it's a pretty, it, you have to get the Spawns of Mayhem and the Rankles, but it's not a terribly expensive deck. It's got some, it's got a bunch of cheap auras in it and the Eidolon, so. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to craft and try out if you want to see how it goes. I'll probably play it in Ranked on Twitch, which you can find me Monday through Thursday from 4 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. And remember, shout out to our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com. Promo code CGB5 to get a discount at CoolStuffInc.com. So thank you for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video. And smash like, hit subscribe jank week at 50,000 subs jank week at 50,000 no jank till then i withhold the jank see you there bye